Hello, I'm Prashanta Chaudhary, and I'm thrilled to welcome you to my channel, Cubex Kits and Projects. Today, we're starting an exciting journey together, a hands-on course in embedded systems, where we'll blend theory with real-world practical projects. Throughout this series, you'll be involved in designing, building, and testing embedded systems with real-life applications. By the end of this course, you'll not only strengthen your foundational knowledge of embedded systems but also gain practical experience working with microcontrollers, sensors, actuators, and control systems. Our first project is a digital timer with water level controller for a submersible pump. This is a highly relevant project, useful in households, agriculture, and industrial settings where efficient water management is essential. You'll learn how to create a system that automatically controls the water pump based on water levels, preventing overflow or dry running, while also optimizing energy usage with a timed operation. So, stay patient and watch this video closely. Remember, as they say, excitement keeps you going, but discipline keeps you growing. Let's approach this with discipline and dive into the project. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Welcome to Cubex Kits and Projects. In this video we will discuss the project, Digital Timer with Water Level Controller. A water level controller with a countdown timer is a device that helps regulate the amount of water in a tank or reservoir. The countdown timer feature allows the user to set a specific time duration for the pump to operate and fill the tank to the desired level. Once the countdown timer reaches zero or the level sensor senses the tank is full, the pump automatically shuts off, preventing the tank from overfilling. This type of water level controller is especially useful in situations where the water supply is limited or there are restrictions on water usage. For instance, in areas with water scarcity, it can help ensure that the water is used efficiently and prevent wastage. The device typically consists of a sensor that detects the water level in the tank and sends a signal to the controller unit, which then deactivates the pump. The countdown timer can be set manually by the user or programmed to start or stop automatically at specific intervals. Overall, a water level controller with a countdown timer is a cost-effective and efficient solution for managing water usage in households, commercial buildings, and industrial facilities. Other uses of digital timer, mobile phone overcharging preventer. A countdown timer can be used to prevent mobile phone overcharging by setting a specific time limit for the charging process. Here are the steps to follow. Plug in your mobile phone to the charger. Set the countdown timer for the desired charging time. The recommended charging time for most mobile phones is 2 to 3 hours. Start the countdown timer. Once the countdown timer reaches zero, unplug your mobile phone from the charger. By using a countdown timer, you can ensure that your mobile phone is not overcharged, which can damage the battery and shorten its lifespan. Additionally, we can leverage the same hardware to cater to various functionalities within the realm of home automation. A countdown timer can be used in home automation to automatically turn on or off devices or appliances after a certain period of time has elapsed. Here are some examples. Lights, you can install a countdown timer switch to automatically turn off the lights in a room after a set period of time. This is useful in rooms where people often forget to turn off the lights when leaving, such as the bathroom, pantry, or laundry room. HVAC. You can use a countdown timer to turn on or off your heating or cooling system after a certain period of time. This is useful if you want to cool down or warm up a room before you arrive, or to save energy by turning off the system after you've left. Watering. You can use a countdown timer to control your sprinkler system so that it only waters your garden or lawn for a set amount of time. This can help you conserve water and save money on your water bill. Appliances. You can use a countdown timer to turn off appliances such as fans, air purifiers, or humidifiers after a certain period of time. 
This is useful if you want to use these devices for a short period of time, without worrying about turning them off manually. Overall, a countdown timer can be a useful tool in home automation, allowing you to control your devices and appliances more efficiently and effectively. Cortex M0 MM32 F0010 Microcontroller 3-digit 7-segment LED display modules Current limiting resistor for 7-segment LED display Relay driving circuit using transistors Linear power supply using a bridge rectifier and LM7805 In-circuit program interface for code debugging and code dumping 4 tactile switches for timer value increment, decrement, start and stop functionalities Water level signal conditioner using transistors LED driver for water level indicator Water level signal from water tank Since this project utilizes the MM32F0010 microcontroller Let's briefly discuss its features and capabilities. ARM Cortex M0 is the kernel with embedded flash memory and static RAM Cortex M0 processor is the latest embedded ARM processor. It provides a low-cost platform, reduced pins, decreased system power consumption, superior computing performance, and an advanced interrupt servicing system to realize the requirements of MCU. The ARM Cortex M0 is a 32-bit RISC processor that improves code efficiency and makes full use of the high-performance ARM kernel in the storage space of common 8 and 16-bit systems. This product has a built-in ARM core, so it is compatible with all ARM tools and software. The embedded flash memory of up to 16 kilobytes for storing programs and data and with embedded static RAM of up to 2 kilobytes. MM32F0010 Microcontroller A quick overview Flash memory size is 16 kilobytes for application code and data Static RAM size is 2 kilobytes 3 timers 16-bit universal timer Basic timer and advanced timer 3 communication interfaces UART I2C and SPI 18 GPIO ports 8 channel 12-bit ADC 48 MHz CPU frequency 2.2 to 5.5 volt operating voltage operation temperature minus 40 to plus 105 degree celsius Now, let's examine the hardware components on the PCB of this digital timer with water level controller. 3 digit 7 segment display size 0.56 inch. Pump on off switch. Timer countdown value increment, decrement switch. ICP programming, debug interface. Tank full indicator LED Current limiting resistor Free wheeling diodes to protect the transistors Main relay indicator LED Trigger relay indicator LED Two diodes rectifier Relay driver Main relay output Trigger relay output Signal conditioner MM32F0010 microcontroller 12012 volt center tapped transformer connection 12 volt AC and tank signal input In this slide, we will explore the bottom layer of the hardware where the PCB hosts the leaded components. Main filter capacitor 
LM7805 Linear Regulator IC 5 Volt Output Ripple Filter Capacitor 1212 Volt Center Tapped Transformer Connection ICP Programming Debug Interface 12 Volt AC and Tank Signal Input Signal Conditioner Capacitors Main Relay and Trigger Relay This is the bill of material of digital timer with water level controller. Working of Magnetic Float Sensor Magnetic Float Sensors, also known as Magnetic Level Sensors, are devices used to detect liquid levels in tanks or containers. They work on the principle of magnetic fields and buoyancy. The sensor consists of two main components, a float and a stationary sensor. The float contains a magnet, and it moves up and down with the liquid level. The stationary sensor, which is mounted inside the tank, contains a reed switch or a hall effect sensor. When the float moves up or down with the liquid level, the magnet inside the float causes the magnetic field to change around the sensor. The reed switch or hall effect sensor detects these changes in the magnetic field and sends a signal to the control system, which can then interpret the signal to determine the liquid level in the tank. In this way, the magnetic float sensor provides a non-contact method of measuring liquid levels without the need for direct contact with the liquid. Stainless steel 316 grade molded contact type water level sensor. Working of conductive stainless steel sensor. A conductive stainless steel water level sensor is typically used to measure the level of liquid in a container or tank. It works on the principle of electrical conductivity, where the presence of liquid completes an electrical circuit. The sensor typically consists of two stainless steel probes, one at the bottom of the tank and the other at the desired liquid level. The probes are made of a highly conductive material, such as stainless steel, to allow for the flow of electric current. Working of Conductive Stainless Steel Sensor When the liquid in the tank rises to the level of the upper probe, it completes the circuit between the two probes, allowing electric current to flow. The sensor then sends a signal to a control system, which can be used to trigger alarms, pumps or other devices. In some cases, multiple probes may be used to measure multiple levels within a tank. The sensor may also be designed to work with liquids of varying conductivity, allowing it to be used with a wide range of fluids. Overall, the conductive stainless steel water level sensor is a reliable and accurate way to measure the level of liquid in a tank, making it useful in a variety of industrial and commercial applications. Connecting the magnetic float sensor Connect the magnetic flow sensor as shown. Hang the sensor at the desired height to fill the tank. Connecting the stainless steel contact type sensor Connect the stainless steel sensors as shown. Hang both the sensors at the desired height to fill the tank. You must have observed that we are using two relays. But why? To understand the purpose of the second relay, which we used to put on for a few seconds, 
We need to understand the starting method of the submersible pump. Submersible pump motors are typically designed with two windings, a main winding and a starting winding. The main winding is used to maintain the rotational speed of the motor, while the starting winding provides the initial torque required to get the motor moving. The momentary capacitor is in parallel through a push-on switch to the running capacitor which is connected in series with the starting winding and is designed to provide an additional surge of current to the motor during the startup phase. The capacitor stores electrical energy and releases it when the motor is first turned on, helping to overcome the initial inertia and load of the pump. The momentary capacitor, connected through the relay, is only needed for a brief period of time during startup, and once the motor is in motion, it is no longer necessary. The capacitor is designed to discharge quickly, allowing the motor to transition to steady state operation without any negative effects. Without the momentary capacitor, submersible pump motors may struggle to start, requiring a much higher current draw and potentially damaging the winding insulation or other components of the motor. By providing the initial surge of current with the momentary capacitor, the motor can start smoothly and reliably, extending the life of the pump and its components. Let's now explore the starter panel of the submersible pump. Before being placed in the well, the submersible pump and motor are coupled together. This represents the control panel of the submersible pump. Now, let's take a closer look at the elements comprising the starter panel. Start button Stop button Ampere meter to measure current drawn by the motor. To read the applied voltage across the motor, use the push button switch to connect the voltmeter. Before initiating motor operation, it is crucial to verify the voltage across the motor. Ideally, the voltage should fall within the range of 220 to 250 volts. Once the motor is started by pressing the start button for a duration of 2 to 3 seconds, the initial current draw may reach approximately 20 amps. However, upon releasing the start button, the current should decrease to around 10 amps. If the current fails to decrease to half its initial value within 4 seconds, it is essential to promptly press the stop button to prevent potential motor damage. Now, let's examine the components within the starter panel. A clearer understanding will be obtained as we analyze the wiring diagram of this panel on the following slide. Start button Stop button Ampere meter Voltage meter Start capacitor Run capacitor Contactor Terminal block Panel wiring diagram Now, it's time to understand the starter panel's electrical connection and try to understand how the operation is performed. Upon pressing the start button for a duration of 2 to 4 seconds, the contactor coil is activated, leading to the initiation of the contactor terminals. This action is accompanied by the placement of the start capacitor in parallel to the run capacitor, thereby providing more power to tackle the mechanical inertia caused by the reverse voltage generation. After the duration, the switch is released. In case you have operated the submersible pump starter panel, you would have noticed that the initial current draw is almost twice the normal current. However, once the pump motor attains the proper starting speed, the current consumption reduces to nearly half. If the current does not reduce after 2 to 4 seconds, it is essential to manually stop the pump by pressing the stop button. 
If not, the motor and the electric wires could get damaged. To integrate the digital timer with the WLC into the starter panel, the wiring connections must be modified as shown in the diagram. After this modification, the regular start and stop buttons will no longer function. Instead, the start, stop buttons on the digital timer will control the panel. Additionally, if a full tank sensor is used to detect when the tank is full, the pump will automatically shut off. In this video, our focus will be on the software component of the timer with a water level controller. We aim to provide a comprehensive explanation of the functional modules incorporated in this project. Function Delay underscore init. This function initializes the system clock tick for the delay function. Here we initialize the input output pins as per the requirement. We have to put the main relay and trigger relay off during power up. Timer 1 interrupt initialization for time counts in the code. Call the routine for displaying the logo. Read the set countdown value from data flash memory and put that value in the associated variable. After soldering a new and fresh microcontroller, despite burning the application code, the data flash area remains blank. Consequently, all FF values are obtained when reading this data flash area, causing the read value to exceed 999. Therefore, assigning a default value of 10 to the countdown time variable is necessary if its value exceeds 999. We utilize this function hex to BCD to convert the countdown hexadecimal value into a binary coded decimal value, which can then be displayed on the 7 segment display. Bypass the timer 1 interrupt count runtime. Start the pump at power startup. For any embedded system we must write this for an infinite loop. Calling the function which scans the tactile 4 switches to detect its state. Again call the function hex to bcd to convert the countdown hexadecimal value into a binary coded decimal value, which can then be displayed on the 7 segment display. After the countdown value is displayed, the routine monitors the pressing of the increment, decrement switch. Once the countdown display times out, it verifies the status of the pump, on, off, and shows off accordingly. Checks the countdown over flag in the timer interrupt to put the pump off and update the status flag. When the tank reaches its full capacity, the pump is automatically turned off. However, the system ensures that the full sensor is repeatedly checked multiple times before deactivating the main relay. This precautionary measure is taken to prevent any potential disruptions caused by noise or stray signals. The routine scans the tactile switches for various functions, including starting and stopping the pump, as well as incrementing and decrementing the time value. The three input-output pins that are connected to the tactile switches are also shared with a three-digit LED display. Countdown value increment routine. If the digit 1 pin used for the display is not selected, i.e., its state is low, it scans the common input pin SW underscore com, which is connected to all four switches. By combining the status of the two input, output pins, we can determine the switch status and take the appropriate action accordingly. To prevent false triggering due to electrical noise, a slight delay is introduced for practical purposes. Increase the countdown value and save it in the data flash memory. Similarly, it checks the digit 2 pin used for the display for decreasing the countdown value. 
The digit 3 pin used for the display is used to stop the motor. For starting the motor we have used a dedicated pin. Let's now examine the allocated I.O. pins for the display system. To align the output pins driving the 7 segment display modules in a sequence, we utilize this code snippet. The code is self-explanatory. We will now conduct an experiment using the display system and a test code. The video will not have a voiceover, but it will include captions. Additionally, we have incorporated background music that aids in enhancing concentration. Therefore, please concentrate your mind and attentively observe the experiment.
In this section, we will cover the essential tools, both software and hardware, required for development and debugging. We will also guide you through the setup process for these tools to ensure a smooth workflow. To facilitate the development of the MM32F0010 Cortex M0 microcontroller, the following software tools are required. ARM Development Kit, Keel MDK ARM, available for free with a code size limit of 32K bytes. MM32 Series Keel Device Support Package. Let us discuss about the ARM Development Kit. Keel MDK ARM, Microcontroller Development Kit, is one of the most widely used software development environments for ARM Cortex M based microcontrollers. Developed by ARM, the MDK ARM is a complete development solution that combines powerful tools and a flexible software framework to help embedded developers create, debug, and optimize their applications effectively. Key features of Keel MDK ARM The MDK ARM package comes with the Microvision IDA, which is a robust and user friendly interface that integrates project management source code editing, and debugging into a single environment. Microvision simplifies development with tools that support code writing, compiling, and deploying firmware to the target hardware. Keel MDK ARM is specially designed for ARM Cortex-M microcontrollers, supporting popular MCU families like STM32, NXP, Microchip, Texas Instruments, and more. It provides comprehensive debugging and development capabilities for processes based on the Cortex M0, M0+, M3, M4, and M7 architectures. Debugger and Simulator The MDK ARM suite includes powerful debugging tools that allow developers to test their applications on real hardware or simulate their behavior. Features include breakpoints, watchpoints, call stacks, memory views, and peripheral registers for detailed analysis. The simulator enables debugging without needing the physical hardware. Compiler ARM Compiler 6 MDK ARM uses the ARM Compiler 6, which is one of the most efficient C, C++ compilers for ARM Cortex processors. It helps optimize code for speed and memory usage, making it ideal for performance-critical embedded applications. MM32 Link Debugger Overview and Key Features The MM32 Link Debugger is a compact and highly efficient debugging tool specifically designed for use with the MM32 series of microcontrollers, a family of 32-bit MCUs based on the ARM Cortex-M core. It provides a convenient interface for developers to program, debug, and analyze their embedded systems, ensuring efficient development cycles and better debugging experiences. Key Features Compatibility with MM32 MCUs The MM32 Link Debugger is optimized for use with MM32 microcontrollers, ensuring seamless communication and functionality across various MCU models in the series. ARM Cortex-M support. Built to work with ARM Cortex-M cores, the MM32 Link Debugger is compatible with various development environments and tools that support this architecture, such as Keel MDK, IAR Embedded Workbench, and others. Applications of MM32 Link Debugger Firmware Development. The debugger assists in writing, flashing, and verifying embedded firmware for MM32 microcontrollers. Troubleshooting embedded systems. It provides detailed insight into program flow and resource usage, enabling developers to diagnose and fix software bugs or hardware faults. Production testing. The MM32 Link Debugger is often used in manufacturing environments for testing and verifying microcontroller-based products before they are shipped. Conclusion. The MM32 Link Debugger is an essential tool for any developer working with MM32 microcontrollers. It offers a powerful set of features, including high-speed debugging, 
compatibility with industry standard development environments, and support for JTAG, single wire debug interfaces. Let's dive into how you can successfully connect the MM32 link debugger for the single wire debug, SWD, interface. Picture yourself with the MM32 link in hand, and you're ready to link it to your target PCB. As you look at the circuit, you'll notice pin 7 on the MM32, which acts as the SWDIO pin. This is where communication magic happens, as it links directly to pin 2 of your PCB's SWD interface. Then there's pin 9, the SWCLK pin, which you need to carefully connect to pin 3 of the target PCB. These connections ensure that your debugger and target PCB are talking to each other effectively. Now comes an essential part. To power everything up, you need to make sure that pin 19, the supply output pin, is connected to pin 1 of the MM32 link. But wait, there's more. Don't forget about the VCC and ground connections. Pin 19, your VCC pin, needs to be connected to pin 1, VCC, of your target PCB. Meanwhile, the ground pins, pin 20, pin 18, pin 16 and pin 14 on the MM32, should be connected to pin 4, ground, of the target PCB. With these connections in place, the debugger and target PCB will be synchronized and ready for the next steps in your project. By making these connections carefully, you are setting up a seamless communication channel between your debugger and the target PCB. In this slide, you'll see how to design a proto-converter PCB for a single wire debug interface. I've created a compact PCB layout that can be easily fabricated by your local PCB manufacturer. Installation process of MM32 link driver To install the MM32 link driver in Keel MDK, the process generally follows these steps. Download the driver. First, visit the official website or the vendor's page that supports the MM32 link debugger. There, you will typically find the driver files specific to the MM32 link. Run the installer. Once the driver is downloaded, open the installer. Follow the on-screen instructions to install the necessary components. Be sure to have administrator privileges to ensure smooth installation. Launch Keel MDK. After the driver is installed, open the Keel MDK IDE. Configure the debugger. Navigate to the Project tab and click on Options for Target. In the Options dialog, select the Debug tab. Choose the MM32 link debugger from the available debugging options in the drop down list. If the driver installation was successful, you should now see the MM32 link as one of the choices. Verify installation. After setting the MM32 link as the default debugger, test your setup by building and running a sample project. The system should be able to connect to the target device via the MM32 link debugger. This process integrates the MM32 link driver into Keel MDK, allowing you to program and debug MM32-based microcontrollers efficiently.